Okay, let's get into the three Canon 50mm 1.8 EF mount lenses that Canon produced, and we're gonna wind the clock all the way back to the 1980s. The first is the Vintage Metal Mount 1.8 lens. This lens was released in March of 1987, and was popular with various Canon SLR film bodies at the time. It was well received and not changed for many years because its optical performance was quite good for the price. Most of these lenses were produced directly out of Japan, so the optical performance and build quality is excellent. Notice it's got a stainless steel rear mount, it has a distance scale, and has a separate manual focus ring. This lens was eventually replaced by the Canon 50mm 1.82 lens, this one here in 1991. This lens continued in production with digital cameras as well when Canon transitioned into DSLR cameras in the early 2000s. All the way through 2015, in fact. This lens was in production for an incredible 24 years. The 50mm 1.82 lens lost its metal mount, lost the distance scale, and the manual focus wheel became the ring on the front of the lens. Thus, it also became about 60 grams or 25% lighter. Most of these two version lenses were produced in Malaysia. Between this and the metal mount first version, I have found that the optical performance is similar, but I prefer the build quality and nifty little distance scale on the original version. In May of 2015, the Canon 50mm STM lens was released, with an MSRP of $149 and current street price of $125, which is this lens. It's the most recent budget Canon 50mm lens and offers some distinct advantages to the other two lenses, particularly when it comes to video shooting. If you're interested in buying this lens at the end of the video, check my link down below in the video notes section for the best current price I've found on this lens through Amazon. Any purchase you make through any of those links help me continue to make videos like this. Anyway, as you can see, they change quite a bit on this lens from the 50mm 1.82. It's just a more solidly built lens and looks less plasticky. It's also considerably physically shorter, meaning that it extends less off the body. Now let's talk about the good stuff. The benefits of the 50mm STM over the other two lenses. The STM version has seven rounded aperture blades versus five non-rounded in the prior two versions, which results in more consistent round bokeh that's a little more pleasing to the eye. The STM, which stands for step-through motor, is perhaps the biggest plus on this lens. If you pair the 50mm STM lens with a Canon body that is T5i or newer, the STM functionality will be available, resulting in exceptionally quiet lens with fast focusing during video. The other two 50mm versions are kind of noisy and tend to hunt a lot during video shooting. The 50mm STM also has a 350mm minimum focus distance versus 450mm of the 50mm 2, meaning you can get roughly 4 inches closer with the STM version versus the prior two versions. Plus, it has the Canon Super Spectre coating that reduces glare a little bit more. It just feels like a better lens and more akin to the better build quality of the original metal mount 50mm. Here's three pictures taken with the three different lenses of the same subject. All very similar, but the furthest on the right, the 50mm STM, has the best bokeh and in-focus center. Here are some more images that I took with the 50mm STM lens. I took these in the last few months on a variety of bodies, from mirrorless like the Canon EOS R50, to the APS-C size T1i, to the full frame Canon EOS 5D Mark II. I really do love this focal length for its simplicity and ability to portray life. You can't get this depth of field from a camera phone. And for its price, it's really a bargain when you can use it on anything from a 15-year-old budget DSLR to a new Canon T8i or mirrorless bodies with an adapter. Or you could find the specific 50mm STM that matches the Canon EOS R system, which was recently released. I can't really mention Canon 50mm lenses without talking about the Canon 50mm 1.4 lens which is the same optical range, but offers an even better shallow depth of field to create some buttery soft bokeh. It's over double the price of the 1.8 STM, and it doesn't have the great video capability as it's a bit noisy, but if you use it strictly for photography, it's a great option, and it's a lens I still own and use regularly. Also, the 50mm f1.2L is a top tier choice, but that lens is over $1,399 new. But if you've got the body and the budget, it could be a great pick too. It has incredible low light ability and stunning bokeh. If you're looking at procuring vintage or used lenses, my favorite place to sell and shop online is still eBay. There are many reputable sellers that do business on the platform. And with eBay recently allowing up to 16 photos, many lens sellers offer quite a few angles of all possible imperfections so you can be sure of your purchase. Whether you're shopping online or in person, there's a few things to watch out for from my experience in dealing with the used market for almost two decades. 
Number one, lenses autofocus motor is broken. This is quite common, especially with heavily used lenses. So make sure this is tested prior to purchase. I have a basic Canon body here for testing all Canon lenses that I receive to make sure the autofocus works properly. The second biggest thing that I see is haze, mold, or fungus internally. This Canon often does affect photo performance by introducing variables, especially when shooting with lots of light or if you have reflections. One thing to note, a little dust, however, is quite common and generally doesn't impact optical performance of the lens. You can see that my copy of the 50mm 1.82 has some dust and optically performed no differently from the metal mount. Thanks as always for watching, and leave a comment down below on what body you use and what you like to shoot or film with the 50mm, or if you don't have it yet, what would you use it for? I'm curious.